Hey everybody, today on Rotto Runs Through, we're previewing a prototype of en route, a stroll and ride game. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goose, you know what they are. And if you've done that, well, then welcome to London, everybody. In this game, each player is running their own tour guide, trying to uh, make the best route through the city of the day and score lots of points by getting tourists where they want to go. Now, the game comes with a bunch of different cities. Like I said, we're doing London today, which is unique because it has the London Underground, uh, as well as the River Thames with bridges that can change things around. But we could have also been playing on Hong Kong. We could even open this up and be playing in New York. And these are just three of the cities that this game comes with that are available in my prototype. If you go check out the eye in the top right corner of the screen to uh, look at the full campaign, I think there's going to be other cities like Paris and Rio de Janeiro, all kinds of stuff. Each city has its own unique thing, like Hong Kong has these ferries that we deal with. And and New York, again, is double sized and has customized cafes, all kinds of fun stuff. But anyway, we're just going to be doing our best to chart the city of London. And every time you play, no matter which city, you are going to have three objectives, an A, a B, and a C that are chosen randomly. And sometimes they are actually tied to the city in question, like my A is bridges. Um, if I make it across at least four bridges, I'll be in the running to score 11 points if I've done the most bridges or six points if I come in second, but I got to get across at least four bridges. In this game, we also are trying to make cramped routes. The number of route sections next to two locations with tourists. So you can see this route section would score, uh, would go towards the scoring because there's tourists on both sides of it. We want to cramp those tourists in tight. You need to have at least three sections to be able to score 11, but again, the 11 goes to whoever does the most. And then subterranean route, or suburban route rather. Be on the outskirts, the number of routes along the outskirts. Which is interesting because the outskirts means not close to the bridges of the River Thames. So these two kind of work at odds with each other. How will we do on them? Well, let's find out. So, the game is set up. Everybody's got their starting situation. Oh, another thing that's unique about London, each of us were able to choose one of two different underground stations and make one free line. So, I came here out of Waterloo, heading, I crossed my first bridge already. Jen started over here in Victoria and is heading towards the River Thames, but she's also happy about this because, hey, she's working along the outskirts, which is good for a suburban route. So, uh, we both have one line built already. That does not happen in the other... Uh, maps, again, every map has their own unique things. So, let's get going. I am the lead player, and on my turn, I'm going to go through this handy-dandy little cheat sheet here. First of all, I'm going to pick one of the cards from my hand. Then my neighbors are each going to pick a card as well, so that there will be a total of three cards available. I'll pick one of the two from my neighbors, and those will be the final two cards that everybody uses in the game uh, to plot our route. And as you can see, there are a series of X and Y coordinates. So if um, I end up, you know, if we end up doing a two three, I could go to, I could put tourists in this zone, or because that's two three, or two three in that zone. And so that's the thing that really makes this interesting. There's no rolling in this game. There's no drawing cards blind. Everybody is choosing their, the um, results of where we want our routes to go. But we're working collaboratively, even though it is a competitive game. So I am the lead player. I'm going to pick one of these. So, one of the two coordinates are going to be a 4, 5, or 6. And considering I'm down here and I want to expand that line, a 5 is pretty good. Because uh, either way, you know, uh, you know, a 5 is getting close to it. The 6 is close as well, but I like the 5. Let's go for the 5. So, that is the first card chosen. Right? And now the rest go back. And now, if I were playing a 3 or 4 player game, the player to my right would play one card and the player to my left would play one card. And once they'd both chosen where they'd like to see the routes go, we'd reveal these. Now in a two player game, Jen's gonna pick two cards. And then I'm gonna pick one of the two cards she chose, and that's gonna be the routes everybody goes for. So if Jen chooses this, hey, five, five, that's gonna be for me right there. I'd be very happy with that, very close. For Jen, it's in a different spot though. You can see Jen's coordinates are completely different. For her, it would be up here at the, um, oh, we didn't quite clean off the ink from the last time we played up here at the Sky Garden. So if, you know, um, but that's if I chose five, because remember, Jen's got to put two cards out. So I make, might pick five, five, or I might pick five, two. So Jen doesn't know exactly what I'm going to do, but which one is she going to be? Does she want to be up here? She wants to be down here as well. 
And unfortunately for her, because I chose a five, that means she's going to be somewhere along here or somewhere along here. She is not going to be happy with the results. Um, but with that in mind, where does she want to go? Does she want it to be like a five, six and way up here on the... No, she definitely doesn't want that. So I think, I mean, because she's here daily at one, one. So hopefully, she's hoping I'll at least pick the 5-2 instead of the 5-5 five, five, so she can kind of be in the same area. Now, the other card she didn't pick, that goes back into her hand. And now, I've got to pick one of these two. We're going to do 5-5 five, five, or we're going to do 5-2. And 5-2 is not great for me because that's way up here. Or, um, all right, 5-2, way over there. I don't like it, so I'm going to do the 5-5. Five, five. Now, the card that um, didn't get chosen... It goes to the bottom of the deck. It might show up later, but these cards are pretty much out of the game. So, everybody's going to be putting tourists in zone 5-5. Five, five. Again, if it had been 5-2, we'd have two different places to choose from, but as it is, we each have one. And what tourists are we going to place? Shopping tourists. Red circles represent shoppers who want to go to the Borough Market, the Mercado Metropol Metropolo, and Smithfield Market. So, 5-5, five, five, which is right here, I'm going to put three shoppers. Now, there's never going to be any more shoppers appearing here. Jen's going to do the same in her 5-5, five five, way over there at Sky Garden. Okay, so, um, and we didn't have a choice about it because it was the matching. Oh, but something else happened. You'll notice this card is all about Big Ben. Because that card got played, Big Ben just got more valuable. By default, if anybody can make a line going by Big Ben, they'll score three points. Whereas going to St. Paul's Cathedral and the Tower of London, nobody cares about those. Alrighty, and I'm not complaining, because I'm right next door to Big Ben. And Big Ben just got on the board to be worth some points. You can see why I chose this one. So anyway, so everybody, um, and this all happens simultaneously. We take turns playing the cards, the cards are revealed, and now um, we put our tourists down, and now we draw routes. And everybody has a choice. They can draw one route anywhere they want on the map, or instead they can draw two connected routes, but only if it touches 5-5, five, five, the current location. And you better believe that's what I'm going to do. I think I am going to do, what am I going to do? All right, I want to touch this uh, so that I can draw two. If I go like this, let's say, um, then I could go one, two, and I just crossed another bridge. I've now crossed two of the four bridges I need to score maybe 11 points for the River Tain bridges. But I'm moving away from the outskirts, from the suburban route. But here's the deal, folks. You can't do well on all three of these objectives. It's just, generally speaking, not possible. You really want to pick one or two you focus on. But these are only one source of points, and they're a small source of points. The main source of points in this game is getting tourists to the tourist spots that they want to see. I need to get these three red people, they're worth a point if I get if I get them uh, if I get a line from them all the way over here to Smithfield Market. They're worth two points apiece if I can make a line that goes to Smithfield Market and then down here Mercado uh, Metropolitano. And they're worth three points each. So this would be nine points for these three if these three could hit all three markets. This is where the lion's share of points are. You want to get the red tourists to the red zones, the green tourists to the parks to the green zones, and the blue tourists to the um, blue uh, cultural zones. So while this is moving me away from the, uh, suburb, the suburban routes, um, it is moving me back towards the market. So these people, so I think I like that. Plus, I just crossed another bridge. I think that's pretty good. I am happy with that. That's how I do it. Because, because I went adjacent to 5-5, five five, which was our chosen location, I got to draw a line of two. All right, now it is Jen's turn. And she wants to draw two as well. So how is she going to do it, though? I think what she's going to do is... She's going to start here and go like this. Bippity bop. All right, so she drew two. She's making a beeline for the suburbs so that she can try getting some more. Because here's the deal. If she now comes along here like this, she'll get over to the Tower of London. That could be worth points, maybe. She's also next to um, the Gherkin. 
you know, I, 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 the coolest new uh, city in, or building in London. This is just worth a flat out eight points. Jen just scored eight points by being next to this. Now her tourists are, she's literally moving them away from shoppers, but she figures she'll do this later to get them over to the shopping. She's trying to get to the suburbs, and she's also thinking, she comes down along here, getting more suburbs. If she hits, um, which one is this? This is the Tower Hill Sub uh, Metro Station. The interesting thing about these underground stations are she could have the line come here and then continue over here like this. They let you do a teleportation effectively. She comes in here, she comes out over there. Now you can only make one um, uh, rail trip or one underground trip throughout, but Jen's making a beeline for the suburbs, making a beeline for here. Hey, maybe making a beeline for this bridge right there. Um, and this, by the way, is a better bridge. The bridges I've crossed here and here, they're not particularly special, but this is the tower. Power bridge, which is worth seven points for crossing this space. So if Jen just keeps on going like this, she might not use this. She just might be trying to do more suburbs, get to this seven points, get to that eight points, etc. And right out of the gate, Jen and I are going for very different strategies. Now these cards are gone. Um, and at the end of the turn, I refill my hand, so I get one more card. Jen refills her hands. She gets two more cards, and Jen becomes the lead player. Everybody has one of these little cheat sheets as a reminder of what we're doing. Uh, mine was green. Everybody else's was red. I am now supposed to say, I'm not the lead player. I've got a red one, and meanwhile, Jen's got the green one. Nice little clever way to keep track of who's the lead player. So, folks, we have just finished the first of 10 rounds. And at the end of 10 rounds, we are gonna score and we'll see how well it turns out. So Jen is up. She's got a four, five, and a six. Uh, more shoppers, some cultural tourists. This makes St. Paul Cathedral more valuable. Where is St. Paul's? St. Paul's is over here, kind of away from where she's going. And now this one's interesting. This one doesn't say what tourists it brings in. It says it, says it brings in twice as many tourists as whatever card your opponent plays. So that's interesting. So anyway, what? Uh, right. So Jen, if she goes for a four, that puts her somewhere over here or over here. If she goes for a six, it puts her on the outskirts. Jen's all about those outskirts, right? She's trying to do the suburb strategy, uh, you know, trying to make that work because it's 13 points if she gets at least six outskirts and she has more than me. So that could be a big swing. Although again. These are generally not the biggest source of points. The biggest source of points is getting your tourists where they need to go. But anyway, so that's going to go. And because this will be played, St. Paul's Cathedral just got more valuable. Um, right, so anyway, now I've got two and I've got a pick. I know it's going to be either over here or over here for me, but is it going to coincide with the six, the five, or the four? Hmm, right. I am nowhere near the Tower of London. Jen is. I do not want to play this one, or sorry, this one and make the Tower of London more valuable. So it's not going to be that one. So it's going to be the five or the four. So a six, five would be right here. More stuff around Big Ben, okay? Or alternatively, it would be uh, down here. That's not bad, continuing this line, and I could cross London Bridge. I could get my third bridge crossed. I kind of like that. So let's put the four out, because I'm hoping to maybe do six, four. And um, since I'm not doing the one, I'm putting the five out as well, because I already decided I don't want to make Tower of London any better, because Tower of London is very far away from me. Although, remember, I'm at a, a rail station. I could say, hey, the folks will go from here and come out here and go along there as well. That is a possibility. But anyway, I've chosen mine, and now Jen makes the final choice. It's going to be 6-4 or 6-5. Hmm, what's better for her? 6-5. Four or five means this or this space, or alternatively, this or this space. That's what she wants. Remember, she wants to come down this way. So let's do it. Jen will take, so either the four or the five is good for her. This will add a single cultural, but she's going to go for this one. So this one, which was not chosen, goes to the bottom of the deck. Might show up later. And so everybody now chooses five, six, or six, five. Let's do Jen first. Jen wants... Six five, and what this says is, hey, put a shopper there at six five, another shopper, and then this says double it up. So put two more shoppers because there's a single shopper here. Put two more, and wouldn't you know, here's a cramped area. Um, if Jen moves past these, right, uh, right next to two locations. So if Jen were to draw a line through here, this would be a cramped area. This would be one of the three cramped areas she needs. So maybe she will. Maybe she'll ultimately do a loop-de-loop. -loop. Who knows? But anyway, so that was it for her. And now she's going to stick to her original plan and come down here like this. Boom. And um, so she has hit a line. Uh, and you know she might ultimately decide 
that, you know, she might expand this, come through here, come out this way, come around, loop to loop like that, hit that cramped space. That's kind of starting to make a little bit of sense. So this might be where she, this might be her true start when all is said and done. And I mean, at the end of the game, you are going to draw one path and score everything along that path. Anything that doesn't connect to that path gets erased. So Jen's thinking this might be the beginning, you know, doing some crossing London Bridge, right? You know, coming over here like this. Jumping over here, coming around here, loop to looping down like this to go through that crowded space, do all these suburbs, and then get down to some more bridges. That might be her long term strategy because she's just made a crowded thoroughfare and she's made it down to um, Tower Bridge, which is very valuable also. Okay, so. Um, that was it for Jen. Me, me I'm uh, simultaneously, I'm picking six, five, or five, six. I'm going into one of these two areas, five, six. Let's go five, six. Let's get into Westminster Abbey. All right, and just like Jen, I'm putting one and then doubling it up, two, three. Three tourists. I've now got a crowded spot I could put some tourists. Um, but more importantly, I am just continuing my back and forth. Let's go like this. Brrrp. So now I have crossed three, although only if I get them all connected at the end of the game will I be able to show that, look, I, my final route went across three of the four bridges I need. London Bridge, though, is seven points by itself. And um, now, once I get this connected, that's six points. For these three people and these three people are all getting to the London Eye, but I need to get up here. I need to get to these other markets. Jen's thinking the same thing. She's got a bunch of shoppers that need to get to all those markets as well. So anyway, so that was it for me. These get discarded. We refill our hands. Two for me, one for Jen. We have finished round two, and now we are on to round three, and I am the lead player. So, what's going on? Oh, I got another six. So again, I could uh, come down here and maybe reach Victoria Station, although I really kind of want to get this connected if I can. Whew. All right, two and three. What is two and three going to be? Two is here, here, getting me over towards these other reds. And what was the other one? Oh, two and three. Actually, I think I'm going to play the three. It's another shopper. It makes Tower of London better. Ah, but Jen's at Tower of London. I don't know if I'm going to. I'm not going to do that one. Let's go with this one and get me over into this area, and maybe I'll make Tower of London better, because this I'm not playing. It stays in my hand. I might play it later. Well, I have two things that make Tower of London better. I think, I'm Tower of, I, think I need to get over to Tower of London. Um, right. Anyway, though. So, that's it. Now, Jen's got to pick two. And she says, oh, uh, two, that's going to be all along here or along here. So this is her chance to extend this line and cross London Bridge. So if she's going um, for two, then she would like a one, because that's exactly where she wants to be, Westminster Abbey. So she puts that in. And remember, she doesn't get to pick which of these. So if she doesn't go that, would she rather be at two, four or two, five? Kind of getting down to her other lines. Or alternatively, five, two... Right, no, right, right. Um, five, two, getting up here into this corner. Hmm. You know what? I think she's going to put this because if this gets chosen, I mean, no matter what, there are now going to be one, two, and um, either, uh, you know, uh, basically there's going to be four park tourists wherever you look. So, anyway, so now I've got to pick two, one, or two, four. What is best for me? Uh, two. Two, one. It would be all up in here and start working on that stuff. Or the uh, the four. Why was I so excited about two? I don't remember now. Or maybe I was just like, all right, so two, four is up here as opposed to two, four down here. Hey, that's a, I, I want more shopping, right? Two, four. That's where I'm going to go. We're going to say it's the four. This goes to the bottom of the deck. And now we can all simultaneously start developing. And I already know I'm going to put one, two, and then double it. I'm going to put four people at two, four at the borough market. And now these people, they all want to get to a park like Sky Garden, Buckingham Palace, uh, Leicester Square, or Regent Park. Okay, so that's it for me. And then I've got to... Now, remember, I could put a single line anywhere I want. I could right now do a single line and connect those. But I'm thinking I'd be able to get that done later. I can always do that anytime. Right now, I'd rather do a double line. And so how am I going to do a double line? Do I just want to do a double line like this and connect this up to all of this so that these green, well, these green people would ultimately get to Buckingham Palace? Or do I want to cover, oh, Millennium Bridge is worth seven points. Oh, there's bridges over here too. So I could go like this, boom, boom. I have now crossed one, two, 
uh, three, four, although they're not all connected yet, which means I'm on the, on the spot for making the 11 points, but I didn't cross Millennium Bridge. That's kind of a bummer. Urgh, I'm not crazy about that. I mean, I could come over here and start trying to work to London Bridge and maybe connect Victoria and Tower Hill. I got a lot of options. And this game just gives you so many options so, uh, so often. Or, hey, do I just want to do this? Boom, boom. And start trying to get these markets together so they can connect ultimately with these. Maybe I'll go like this and do a lot of suburbs getting over here, coming along doing some... Maybe that's going to be my final route. Things are starting to come into shape. I kind of like that, especially because I just went right by the shard, which is worth seven points. Let's do this. Yeah. Now, I'm not helping my green people get to any parks. They're all the way up there. But hey, if nothing else, I'll ultimately get my green people over there, right? At the very least. So let's say we're going for that, and ultimately I need to get all these together. So that's it for me. Meanwhile, Jen says 2-4 or 4-2. 2-4 or 4-2. Uh, Trafalgar Square or, or, I'm sorry, no, or next to Trafalgar Square. Oh, wow, look at the epicenter of all these things. Wow, that's pretty nice. Or 4-2, uh, right there or there. Jen's got to pick one of these two zones to put for... I think she's going to do that and get these park people right next to Leicester Square. Four. All righty. That looks pretty good. Those, that should be a square. By the way, folks, everybody gets their own set of the four colored pins, but you don't have to. If, if, if you're good about your colors or your, your, your shapes, rather, you could just use one color for everything if you want to. But it is kind of nice to be able to visually remind yourself uh, both with both color and shapes. But this game is totally colorblind friendly, because all you have to focus on is the shapes. Anyway, so now Jen, she could do a single line anywhere, or she could do a double line over here. And I think she wants to, because now all these tourists can get into Leicester Square. And look at this. She could go like that. And now, she's got three. Now remember, she can only make a virtual connection between two of the three. But this is giving her a lot more options. If she goes over there to Tottenham Station. On the other hand, if she goes like this, she's going by the British Museum. And if we ever get any cultural people, they'd like to get next to that. Or, if she just keeps going straight, she can be getting these green people up to Regent's Park. So these are all good options. That is a tough choice. Honey, would you go for the uh, rail line or going for the park, or what do you think? Uh, I like the park. Jen says the park, so she's heading up there to Regent's Park. Although, here's the thing. She could go like this, and then go up this way and get to it as well, and have more suburbs also. Oh, that's two birds with one stone. I think that's the way Jen's going to go. All right. So, um, we'll see how things evolve. These cards are discarded. We refill our hands. One two, and one, and we have just finished the third. We're about a third of the way through this game, folks, and things are really starting um, to open up. Jen is the lead player now. She picks a five, a five, or a three. She's also making the Tower of London better, potentially, um, which is good for her because she's already there, so she probably wants to do that and then make the Tower of London worth three points because currently it's not worth anything. Although now I'm close to the Tower of London too because I just did that. So maybe she doesn't care about it so much. Uh, the, and also we could be bringing some cultural in or some more shoppers. Interesting. Oh my goodness. I gotta say folks, this is a tough choice. And the choices just get tougher as the game goes on and on. Jen wants to do more suburbs. She kind of wants to do this loop-de-loop -loop to try and get this cramped route going. Uh, and then make a second cramped route someplace else, because that's 11 points you could get for it. But at the end of the game, we have a nice little handy-dandy reminder here of how we score. We score all the big, super special places, right? Uh, you know, which are seven, eight, six points. Um, we score the uh, the St. Paul's Cathedral, the Tower of London, Big Ben, depending on how valuable they are. Their value is based on choices we make. We score over specific bridges. We score uh, four points for every underground we visit. Which again, underground is only here on um, London. We don't have these scoring things on others. But then there's the goals, the A, B, C, and um, finally down here. We multiply the number of red tourists times the number of red locations we have reached on our final connected map. And so, I mean, and we do the same for the green and the blue, the culture and the park fans, and we add all of this up and we see 
who wins. And that's if we're playing London. Like I said, if we were playing Hong Kong, we've got different stuff going on. We've got cafes, which give you special powers if you can get to them. Plus, every unused special power is worth points. Plus, there's a set collection for getting to these uh, particular touristy spots spread all over the place. If you get all four of them, that's 20 points. If you only get two of them, that's six points. Um, plus, we've got ferries that let us jump around. Plus, we've got bridges that are harder to get across. You know, or if we were playing in New York, we've got the cafes, but the cafes don't have fixed powers. Instead, there's a deck of cards that randomizes what powers for we get out of the cafes from turn to turn. Plus, it's twice as big. Um, you know, and as well, there are other maps. And again, if you want, you can hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen to learn what other powers there are. Uh, with so much variety, so much going on in and route this stroll and ride game. And folks, I'm going to stop right there because I actually give you a basic idea of the overall flow of the game. And if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen, or you can follow the links down in the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.